The first episode of Gimmer's Lab is dedicated to our mother, Gloria Alice Petrucci, aka VGBC Mom, in remembrance of her life and for her birthday, May 4th, 1966. She was a loving, dedicated mother who always showed support for me and my brothers in everything we chose to pursue. We love you and miss you, Mom. I was alright. You know that the video game sign is from BJ Boot Camp. Phantom Foot Stool is going to change the game. I can smile. Trust me. I was just trying to change the meta. I was just trying. I was just trying to change. I was just trying to change the meta. Gamer hasn't left this place for months, dude. I don't. I don't know what's going on there. I see it in the frames, but I don't know what it is. It's back to the lab with me. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Gimmer, you need to get help, bro. You need to get help. What's up guys? Gimmer the video game scientist from VG Bootcamp here. And it's time to change the meta. I did a lot of labbing, a lot of research, and I'm really, really happy with what I've come up with. I um, wanted to give some shout outs real quick just at the beginning. Uh, my brother John for helping me throw this all together. My brother Apostle, always being there for me, co-founder of VG Bootcamp. My girlfriend Cher for helping me film the uh, teaser trailer. That was a lot of fun. And just everybody that is uh, helping make this happen. So let's jump into it. First thing I just wanted to say is make sure and stick around till the end. I have a very, very special announcement I'm making and you guys are gonna love it. I'm really excited to do even more cool stuff for episode two of Gamers Lab. So make sure and give me a follow. Now, after the whole Phantom Footstool disaster of 2019, I knew that if I announced this tech, y'all weren't gonna believe me unless the pros backed me up. So I sat down with some of the pros and I showed it to them, but I didn't show them how to do it or how it worked. This was their reaction. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the footstool, like the footstool thing you discovered is really good. Yeah, it's good. It's a long video too, let's go. Is it, like, this is the levels we're getting right now. All right, there here we go. go. Ah, ah. Uh, <laughs> right. All right, here we go. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's full Like, oh, wow, what are you gonna do? This is fucking crazy. Oh shit! Oh, 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 oh. What am I supposed to do with this? He's trying to show Brad. Can I see it again? <laughs> It's dealing with so many def defensive options at the same time. That's what's so cool about stuff like this. Oh, no. oh, 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 o
good as like infinite pressure. That's <laughs> like wave dashing in the air. Yeah, I, I, I love now. <laughs> Dude, look at the angles you get. This is my kind of shit. Bro, if most of them are safe, everyone is safe. It's really broken. It's like, once this is actually the thing. I'm going Everything I'm about to show you is made possible by the development of a small group of mechanics rolled into one that I coined the Slingshot. The Slingshot is a small group of overlapping mechanics that creates multiple options from a singular bufferable starting point. It's quality of life change which leads to input shortcuts and advanced movement options. These new options can be applied to every aspect of the onstage game. At the end of the day, you get more control over your character. The slingshot consists of semi-technical inputs, but it is lenient in practice. It's our chance to integrate a technique that can create a skill gap for those who are willing to put in the extra work. I truly believe this can change the meta. But as ultimate players, you're gonna have to be willing to be patient on something that you're not gonna be able to implement into your game in one sitting. This isn't a one-for-one -one comparison, but it took melee players quite a while to be able to consistently wave dash, and they rolled with the punches until they got it right. So seriously, if you really, really wanna level up and you wanna have more fun playing the game, take the time to learn this, and don't give up. And at the end of the day, it actually isn't that hard. And it's pretty lenient, like I said before. So I'm sure you all wondered why I put an infinite symbol in the trailer. Uh, I wanted to misdirect you guys. You just saw the showcase and you saw how Lucas was moving. Every character in their own way can make a sort of movement loop like this. So that was actually what I was showing. And that's just one little piece of the puzzle. Now the slingshot has different variations and sub variations. They work differently for each character based on their air attributes. In this presentation, you're gonna see a lot of Lucas because I feel like this character is one of the most versatile with the slingshot, so I get to show a lot of different options with just one character. But this works for every character. Every character gets new options. Every character gets better spacing. Every character gets to play how they want and avoid the pitfalls Ultimate has when it comes to moving and getting stuck in movement patterns that you don't actually want to do. I'm telling you right now, because this is a bufferable input shortcut and a new movement option at its core, I constantly think of new uses for it in different parts of the game. There's so much utility this brings to the game. And after this presentation, y'all are gonna find so many more unique uses for it. If you're wondering why I called it the slingshot, it's pretty simple. Mainly, it's two syllables, so it rolls off the tongue nicely. Wave dash, slingshot. And also the name kind of aligns with the movement as well as the controller input. So voila, the slingshot. So, let's get into the meat and potatoes a little bit. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how and why slingshotting works, the problems it solves, its different variations and sub-variations, showcase the new options it brings to the table, and show how to apply it in almost every aspect of the onstage game. In its simplest form, the slingshot is two controller stick inputs in quick succession. Dash, forward or back, then down back or up back. But generally down back is a bit better, as it has more utility, if done correctly, your character will dash in the initial direction, but they won't dash back. For most uses, slingshot is almost always followed up with jump. Technically speaking, that would be like a slingshot hop, 
but because it's almost always used that way, we'll probably just default to slingshot for that. Now those two inputs I talked about aren't like something that people don't know about, but I think it's mostly known at a very basic level and it, nobody really looked into it much further besides doing like full hop rard aerials really fast. But this one simple input like has lots of layers and different mechanics like on top of it. It was all kind of like right there, but like it wasn't obvious. It was like a very simple mechanic. Like, how would we ever know? And honestly, I completely found this on accident and that's why I decided to start going into it more. There are three main slingshot variations. The flick shot, the hold shot, and the full shot. I'm gonna explain the flick shot first and use that as a base to go over a bunch of the different mechanics related to the slingshot and then go over the other variations and reveal more and more. Okay, this is how you do the flick shot. For this example, we're gonna do a flick shot that starts with a dash to the left. Dash left, flick your controller to the bottom right, press jump. If done correctly, you'll instantly be facing right, but you'll fly left at max airspeed. And you stay at max airspeed for a bit. And when I say flick, I mean flick, so it goes back to neutral. The goal here is to get the jump out around frame five, frame six. It might seem really quick, but when you practice it enough, you'll get used to it. Now the reason this happens is because you go from max ground speed into your jump squat animation. Jump squat animations have no ground friction, which means for those three frames, they're at max ground speed until the first airborne frame. Every character's max ground speed is higher than their max airspeed. So you're in your max airspeed on that first frame. Something that uh, until this was not possible to do this quickly out of a dash. And I'll get to it a little bit later, but you can do it even faster for a specific reason. Because of this, there are two really nice sub variations. One where you hold left and you have quite a bit of time to do it with most characters and you continue at max air drift all the way back. And the second one, which doesn't work great on all characters, you drift back. Now, if you're having trouble, I'm gonna diagnose your problem and how to fix it. If you notice your character's kind of like not flying back, then your control stick was not neutral on the first airborne frame. It was being pressed in a direction. To fix this, all you have to do is flick it a little bit faster. If your character isn't turning around, it means you're pressing jump before your control stick crosses that threshold. So just delay the jump a little bit. So that's the flick shot's three main variations, and you can already see a lot of movement options being opened up. Next, let's go over the hold shot. The input is similar, but it's a way different outcome. Instead of flicking the control stick, you hold it in that down back diagonal. Just like the flick shot, you'll go from max ground speed to max airspeed. The difference is on that very first airborne frame, you'll also be pushing back in the opposite direction with decently high air acceleration. Getting that drift input on the first airborne frame actually makes a big difference since you're bursting in one direction and on the first frame also immediately pushing back. The full shot is the exact same thing as the hold shot. The difference is after you press jump, you roll your control stick from down back to holding full back. So on your first airborne frame, your max ground speed is competing with your max initial air acceleration. So it gives more of a boost than the hold shot. Every character is different though. Some need the full shot to hit certain angles, some need the flick shot, some need the hold shot. It's all based on that character's attributes and obviously a character like Lucas 
can like completely overcome their initial momentum while a big character is gonna have trouble but still get a lot of movement options from this. Now that we know how to do a slingshot, let's talk about the buffer system and how important it is to slingshotting. Dashes have a seven frame buffer window. That means if you buffer a dash within seven frames of another move ending, the dash will come out on the first available frame. And there's this weird mechanic that makes it so if you buffer a dash in that seven frame window, and then afterwards in that seven frame window, you buffer down back or up back, the dash will still come out on the first available frame, but you're still holding down back or up back. This means you have seven frames to buffer a slingshot, and all you have to do is time the jump right after the previous animation's over. So if you start perfecting a five or six frame slingshot hop, you can buffer it at the very end of other animations and all you have to do is time the jump. Now let's take what we just learned about this buffer system and create a new movement option. We're gonna dash forward and then buffer a back dash flick shot. So the jump starts almost right after the buffered back dash starts. And this is what you get. Okay, now let's talk about special moves. This is actually really, really cool. You're able to very easily run back, instantly turn around, and do a buffered special move. So you got flick shot, you got hold shot, and you got full shot. With the flick shot, you get your neutral B. With the hold shot, you get down B. And with the full shot, you get side B. This just opens up a lot of options because normally this is just way too hard to do consistently. So now you have a very, very comparatively easy way to do this. Now let's add wave bouncing on top of that. It just adds like this really dynamic piece of movement gameplay um, with your special moves that just, it just was way too hard to do before. I'm really, really excited to see you guys get creative with your characters. Okay, now let's talk about aerials. Because of the freedom of movement that Slingshot gives you, it just, it lets you do aerials where and when you want to. When you Slingshot with a C-Stick, it barely affects your aerial momentum. For example, when you do down throw back air with Pell and you do attack canceling, it kind of forces you into your opponent. So if you mess up and miss them, you're like inside of them. But if you do a full shot back air, Pally will burst towards them and the back air will pretty much land in the same spot. But because she's immediately pulling back, she'll drift away. And if you mess up, they're not going to be able to punish you. 
One thing I wanted to briefly touch on is hurtbox shifting. For many characters, the slingshot shifts their hurtbox back better than back dashes. In this clip, Sheik back airs shield, tries to dash away, and gets shield grabbed. In this next clip, she does the slingshot instead and gets away. And with characters like Mewtwo, whose tail is always getting in the way, slingshotting instantly puts his tail behind him, which gives Mewtwo so many more options now because he doesn't have to deal with running away and getting clipped. Okay, now let's talk about shield pressure. This is like one of the greatest things about the slingshot. Because you now have way better control over your character, this means you can space your aerials on shield better. But not only that, after you hit their shield, you can come back at them and space the aerial again, properly. And the way that the slingshot works, it kind of puts you in that position that's really hard for most out of shield options to punish. And then you get to come back on top of them if you want to. And because you save so many frames, this is like the only way to hit someone's shield, jump out of that burst range, they whiff the grab, and then you come back on top of them and actually punish the grab. And because of this, it allows you to hit certain things that are generally just like harder to hit. Like look at this clip of Pikachu punishing multiple out of shield options with Slingshot Fair. I wanna be clear about something. There's gonna be a lot of people that see this and they're gonna think it's the same as other things that have already been discovered. There's no other way to do this. The other options aren't as quick, are far more technical, so it's hard to consistently do them, and they're just really precise. Let's take instant roaring, for example. After the initial dash, you have to do a frame perfect back dash and press jump on the same frame. It also doesn't have all the other options the slingshot does. And the slingshot can be buffered and it's way more lenient for mistakes. There are just so many things the slingshot can do. And I know after I put this out, people are gonna discover other stuff. Here's a quick breakdown of some of the other things you can do with this. If you do the slingshot, but you don't jump, you can actually buffer a pivot grab in the opposite direction, like really, really quickly, like frame perfectly, and it's not nearly as hard to do. Another really cool thing you can do is an instant reverse jump cancel up smash. The difference is instead of holding it down back, you wanna hold up back. And then all you have to do is time the jump and the A press. This is like the only way to get a three frame dash instant reverse up smash. Now this Ridley combo probably doesn't actually matter, but it's not possible without the slingshot. Let's talk about Shotos. So one, just this flick shot is really good for them in general. But secondly, if you land with an aerial, you can now do a back air towards your opponent. You can just keep doing it over and over. I labbed and I could not figure out any other way to do this without the slingshot. The slingshot allows Peach to dash, turn around float, and back air with ease. The flick shot also allows you to do instant dash forward reverse Z drop items. All you have to do is flick shot and then time the jump and Z press macro.
This opens up a lot of options because the only way to do this before was with instant raring, and it was way more precise and hard to do consistently. Another really cool thing is tomahawk. Now normally people do tomahawk grabs, but because this thing explodes you so far back, so quickly, you can tomahawk with slingshot aerials and slingshot special moves. If you're under a platform, it also makes it much easier to land on the platform with an aerial spaced well. Well, that is the slingshot. I really hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. I've been doing a lot of labbing with this and like I really, really wanted to just show you all the cool things you could do. I am very, very, very certain other things will be discovered and other characters have really, really cool options with it that I haven't even thought of. And the main thing is, like I talked about earlier, um, there's a little bit of a barrier to entry, but uh, because it's so lenient, you have like seven frames because of the buffer window and all that. Once you get used to it, it's not that bad. And uh, yeah, like it, 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 could, it could very well, if people are willing to do it, create a little bit of skill gap because um, you'll have to learn this um, in order to be able to compete because of all of the options it gives you now, especially when it comes to movement and air momentum and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys watching this. It's gonna be on YouTube. Actually, you might be watching this on YouTube. But yeah, uh, I finally got it out. Finally. Working on this for so long, you know, I like, uh, because I own three companies, I have to find my spots to work on stuff like this. You know, I'm not a content creator. This is like the thing I do for fun. So like, pit, like getting like four hours a week and like just trying to find a spot where I'm not dead tired to do it. Um, but it was really fun and, I, and I'm happy how it turned out. So thanks again for watching. Um, I actually have a very, very special announcement. It's back to the lab with me. I'll see you guys next time. And check out this announcement. What's up guys? Gimme the Video Game Scientist from BG Bootcamp here. Let's mix things up a little bit.